think with me for a second about a loved one who might be in need of help. Maybe they're having some medical troubles. To what lengths would you go to help them find healing? We'd probably go and turn over every stone, Google every WebMD symptom possible, and go to every doctor we can until we figure out what is wrong, uh, what is causing any infection or, or problem that might be going on. We would uncover every stone for one we cared about, or if they're in need, we'd bring them food, we'd give them money, we'd do whatever it takes to help them out because we care about them, we love them, we want them to be well. We're going to read a story in Mark 2 about some remarkable people who exemplified this well for us. And in Mark chapter 2 it says, And when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together, so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them, and they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. These four men did whatever it took to lay their friend before the feet of Jesus. They tried to go in through the door, and no, it was packed. They couldn't get through the door, so they went around. They took the stairs up to the roof, and they started digging away at the roof so that they could let their friend down before the feet of Jesus. And Jesus says, son, your sins are forgiven. He saw the faith in the friends and, and forgave the paralytic. At this point, everybody's thinking, wait, what? He's paralyzed. Do you not see that? What are you talking about forgiving sins? And let's read and see how this all plays out. In verse 6, it says, now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts. Why does this man speak like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately, Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed, and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. So you have all the scribes. Jesus has forgiven this man of his sins and all the scribes and people are saying, wait, only God can do that. Who do you think you are? And Jesus says, I know, but just so you're, so you're aware, I can also heal him. And so he tells the paralytic man, hey, rise, get up, take your bed, go home. You're healed. The miracle here is not in the paralytic getting up and going home. The miracle is in the forgiveness of sins. Jesus had asked, you know, what's easier, forgiving sins or, or making them walk? And so he forgave the sins and then also made him walk again. All started with the faith of the four men to say, all right, we've heard this guy is in town who we know he can do miracles. We know he can work wonders. Let's do whatever it takes to get our friend and lay him at the feet of Jesus. And, and when Jesus saw that, that they did whatever it takes, he says, hey, son, your sins are forgiven. And, and that's the miracle. And then people were, were questioning in their hearts, and Jesus said, look, I can heal him too. And just so you know that I have the power to forgive his sins, I'll heal him. Jesus' primary goal wasn't just to work all of these miracles. It wasn't to take away all of sickness and death right now. It was to preach repentance. It was to preach forgiveness. And then dying on the cross once and for all, taking our place so that we can spend eternity with our Father. Jesus made the path to forgiveness. He not only has the authority to forgive, uh, but he paved the way for us to be forgiven. So I've got one question. Who is that person in your life who you've seen who needs to be cleansed? And this isn't thinking, oh, hey, Fred over there is really doing some ugly stuff. Yikes, stay away. This is, hey, who do I care 
so much about that I'm going to bring them before the feet of Jesus, the one who can forgive us of our sins. And what am I going to do? Am I going to do it at all costs? Am I going to tear open the roof to get them at the feet of Jesus? We attempt to bring others to Jesus. We're not the ones doing the cleansing. There is one who does that, and that is Jesus. So if you don't know how to do that, if you have questions on how to do that or what that looks like, reach out to us, send us a message. We would love to have that conversation with you. We would love to encourage you as you seek to bring those around you and lay them down at the feet of Jesus as the one who can cleanse us and the one who can forgive us our sins so that you can go away amazed, glorifying God for what he's done. Thank you.